Hey everyone, and welcome to our live. We are so happy you could join us. We've got people from all over the place. We have people from Iowa, Jan from Apple Valley, California. We have uh, Julie from snowy Montana. It's snowing somewhere already. And uh, there we have Queensland, Australia, Austria, Brisbane, UK, San Antonio, Texas. So the list goes on and on. So we are super happy that you have joined us. I have Mama Deer here. Hey, Mama Deer. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'm surprised she hasn't like kiboshed the uh, Mama Deer thing yet, but we'll see what happens, right? Okay, I'm getting some smiles at least, so that's the good news. Anyways, I am so glad you uh, could join us. We have uh, quite a few things to go over. We've had obviously tons of new uh, launches, parties, uh, fun effects courses. It's been a really, really busy fall. And I just wanted to share with you a couple of the kind of regular things that we have going on, what's kind of been going on with our new releases. So I'll just show you those really, really quickly. And that way you'll get an idea kind of what we do every single week. And we do have new releases every week on our site. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we actually uh, produce our own ESA fonts for the Hatch and Wilcom commercial platform. We come out with a new font every single week. And I think we're well over 900 at this point. But these are the last four that we've done in the last four weeks. And I think they are kind of cool applique stuff to celebrate Christmas. And of course, everybody likes monograms. And these fonts are available individually, but I do want to point out that members always, always save all of our font, uh, all of our fonts, whether they're ESA or BX or native BX or you know regular stitch file fonts are available to all of our club members for five points each, and that does translate into a gigantic savings. Um, we're basically talking that in the uh, highest level of addict, you end up getting a font for $2.25. So it is crazy as far as uh, how inexpensive the fonts can be. Now, I do also want to show you guys that we do have a new release last week. And this one I was kind of excited because we haven't done one in a while. We released two new patches. So these are our simulated marrow edge patches. We have a rounded corners to rectangle and we have a shield number four, which is what we called it. And the marrowed simulated edges on them are just beautiful. They replicate an actual marrow stitch that was produced uh, you know, 50 years ago. And that's what we tried to do. We tried to simulate as closely as we could an actual marrow stitch. So those are available. And this week, just so you know, and they're also five points each. So that's something that we just recently did. We put all of our patches into our club memberships. So now if you're a member, you can get all of the patches within your membership as well. And this week we have something unique, which is our new braided patches. And we release six different shapes in different sizes. So to give you an idea, we have squares, obviously, in four different sizes. And the beautiful part of these is, and if I can get into this part here, the actual marrowed, it's not a marrowed edge, but the braided edge is very unique looking. It's a, it's a um, motif that is continually repeating itself. And we actually did it with regular stitches and with puff stuff. So when you put the puff stuff on there, you get a really raised effect of your borders and they just look spectacular. Now keep in mind as well, all of our patches, whether they're braided edges or simulated marrow edges, they can be done as a patch, but you could also embroider those directly onto a garment like an applique. So that is an option. You don't have to make a patch out of those files. You can actually make appliques. So it's been a while since we've done anything patch related, but those are you know, now available and there'll be lots more coming. And for those of you who didn't know, we actually have a poly twill that was called a patchback poly twill. And it's a poly twill material that we have available in 16 different colors. But the difference is it's not just PVC backed, it's actually backed with a buckram material. And the buckram is what we used to use back in the commercial days. So you have your poly twill here, but on the back you have this white buckram on the back and that's what makes the patches so stiff. Well, if you're going to use one of our patch files, the braided patch files as an applique, you probably won't want it to be super stiff. So just recently, we actually put onto our site our new applique poly twill. 
So we have the exact same 16 colors, but now they are just PVC backed with the twill front and they are much softer. They cut clean. So if you have a scan and cut or a, a Cricut or any of those cutters, uh, you can take this material, lay it out on the you know, standard tacky mats, and it will just cut out like a dream. And you can do appliques that are going to be perfect every single time. Yes, Jennifer. Going back to the patches, no, you do not need to be a club member to purchase nope, the patches. No, you do not. Uh, the patch uh, individually, like let's just say you're talking about this shape here. This is the new braided oval patches. You get all four sizes of these patches with the cut files and the, uh, I guess, the all the instructions on how to actually make a patch with it. And you get all four of these in all the different formats. So I think it's $8.95, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So it's $8.95, but if you're a club member, obviously the price is a fraction of that because you end up getting all of your designs at a discount. So that's kind of what's new. There's been so much happening here at Embroidery Legacy that there's other stuff happening which almost gets hidden because there's other things that are just foreshadowing it. So uh, brand new uh, applique twill fabrics as well as new patch uh, shapes and new patch borders using our braided motif. So anyways, um, Stitch to Win, I do want to get that uh, done right now because I know everybody is anxious. We are just amazed at all of the entries that we've been getting. If you don't know about Stitch to Win, all you have to do is uh, embroider one of our Embroidery Legacy designs and post it on our Facebook group. Is that correct, Jennifer? So you post it on the group and you have to put a hashtag in there. Do you remember what the hashtag is? Stitch to win or I'm not Beth. Beth isn't with us today. So she's the one who normally handles this. She's just coming on. Oh, is she? Okay. Yes. Beth's coming on. Yay. Hey, so Beth. Beth can answer. Hi, Beth. Well, okay. Before you jump into yep. that, uh, Sharon's asking, do you have any classes on circuit and what they use it for? Uh, no, we do not have any classes on the cutters, but I will mention uh, Beth Deer, my, my daughter, she has been kind of begging me for a cutter and she is getting one next week, actually. So we will be doing more projects. Jennifer didn't know that. Don't tell mom I bought you a cutter, Beth. Okay. So <laughs> Jennifer's laughing over there, but it's, it's actually, I know the brother and it was, uh, Linda Rayburn who told me about this. The new scan and cuts have a rotary blade cutter, which apparently does an incredible job on all kinds of fabrics. So anyways, uh, we are going to probably do more content geared towards the cutters because, uh, we are playing with them for appliques and other projects and Beth wants to be creative. Uh, anything else, Jen? Uh, yes, yep. Ellen says she has used the poly twill for patches and she'd never go back. Awesome. So. Yeah, the, the poly twill is awesome, whether it is the one that's made for patches or whether it's the applique one. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we offered both to people. And the one without the, the buckroom is a little less expensive as well. So if you don't need the buckroom, then by all means use the less expensive product. So we were excited because we actually had 111 entries this last oh. month within the stitch to win. So that is awesome. So thank you everybody who actually entered and we're going to spin the wheel because Beth is actually, uh, we didn't know she'd be here today. Actually, it's a, a surprise that she is. She had me set all this up. So if there's any technical glitches, it's actually my fault, not Beth's. So, but uh, let's see, yay, the wheel did come up. So all the people are actually in the wheel right now. I just have to try to get over to that part. And here we go. So we're going to spin the wheel and we'll announce the winner. Keep in mind, we will announce the winner and uh, we will contact you because we have all of your information. So we'll make sure we contact you. I know there's a great prize uh, and I don't even know what the prize is. Do you, Jen? Maybe, I'm sorry guys, but there's just so much going on here. My my old brain is starting to get filled up. So okay, I'll just mention yep. that uh, if you are doing something with our design files and you want to enter Stitch to Win, the hashtag to use when you're posting in our group is hashtag Embroidery Legacy and to link the design that you've used from our site. Awesome, okay. Okay, and the club memberships start at $67 a year. Yep. And there's three different levels. Three different levels, all the way up to the Embroidery Addict. That's the that's what we call the highest level, and you get 600 design points in a year, so it's a lot. But let's spin this, and we're going to see who our Stitch to Winner uh, winner is this month. 
and I think it'll start up again in next month, but we actually have, let me see here. Oh, it was close. Okay, Karen Hoban. Karen, yay. Congratulations, Karen. Congratulations, you are this uh, month's Stitch to Win uh, winner. And what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that uh, we contact you. And the other thing that we are gonna do is post your design within our groups and on our page tomorrow. So everybody will see the winning design. Fair enough? Because I don't have all the pictures. I know Beth has those. Yes. So we'll have to play it that way. And just to answer your question, because you just keep talking, Sorry. it's the enthusiast membership, <laughs> which is 20 downloads a month. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Am I allowed to talk now, Jen? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Now I have to figure out how to get back over to my... PowerPoint. So give me one second. Okay, while you do that, yep. uh, I'm going to answer a question. Mary's sure. asking, where do you find the classroom for the tutorial videos? Uh, Mary, you would go to our website, digitizingmadeeasy.com and log in in the top right corner. And once you're logged in, you will find your classroom. Awesome. Yeah. And whether it's lessons, whether it's the Digitizer's Dream Course or whether you've recently got the Design Doodler, uh, all of those classes and artwork and everything you need will be in your classroom. Yes. So now here we have already announced the winner. So congratulations. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the Design Doodler. And I know we're going to have some questions on this, but I do want to bring in a very, very, very special guest. And it is Julie Milne. Hold on. I got to get you in here, Judy. Hold on. I know you're... She's uh, chomping at the bits here. Here we go. Hey, Judy, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. And I will just say that, Judy, you look fantastic considering <laughs> what time it is over there. No, it's, it's not too bad. Not too what, bad. Yeah, what, what time is it? It's like after midnight, isn't it? Or close to it? We're at uh, just before midnight. Our clocks have gone back for the, the winter. So we're okay at... for the winter. Well, uh, if you if you don't know who Judy is, she is an incredibly talented artist. And I say artist because you are talented on so many levels. And I think embroidery has recently become a not I don't know how recently, but I think embroidery has become a bit of a passion for you. But do you want to just let us know kind of where you started out in your journey of being an artist? So I've been a professional tattoo artist for 25 years. And awesome. before that, graphic design and freelance cartoonist and illustrator. So yeah, about 30 years of um, doing well, various it, it definitely it definitely shows because the the designs that you've posted over the last months on all of our groups have been incredible <laughs> and it, comments always blow up whenever you post something and you did actually get the doodle doodler recently and i'm just going to show a couple of the other pieces you did because i just love how creative they are and i see the <laughs> the tattoo style coming out in a lot of your pieces i mean uh, and I, I like that. I think, Jennifer, we'll have to take a trip over just to get a couple of tattoos. So, <laughs> but, uh, but this one, this one she was... She does it all, does she? Yeah, she does everything. Yeah. So Different. actually, what I would like is I would like a tattoo that really resembles stitches. I've seen those on social media before. Yeah. And they look incredible. So can you do that type of thing? I'll give that a go. Yeah. <laughs> give it a go. Okay. I'll be, I'll be your guinea pig. I'll book a flight, Jennifer, book a flight. For, no. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that sounds awesome. But this is a design that you did in the doodler. And um, I guess if you want to just tell us a little bit about, I guess, your style and also uh, the doodler's only been out a week as of today, but kind of what you think, and please be honest. So well, my style, I've got quite an eclectic style, but uh, being Scottish, obviously, um, my art tends to go down quite a lot of the Pictish, Celtic kind of routes, so lots of spirals and illustrative bits and pieces. So I um, started using the Doodler, and it's just really intuitive. Um, I found it, uh, in fact, I haven't really done any of the tutorials, just started playing around with it. And um, I find it complements my other software, but this is just something that makes me just want to do art stuff. So 
I'll cool. sit and sketch. So this piece made me bring it further into stitching it out and then working in with paint and just playing really. And it's a, uh, yeah, brilliant, mm -hmm. loving it. Yeah, be, being, being, I guess, artistic. And I mean, I love digitizing and I, I love the way you put that because I think one of my first comments last week when we announced this whole you know, program, the doodler, not the digitizer, but I made sure it's called a doodler, is that uh, this is not a program that competes with any current software people have. So, you know, if you want to do a corporate logo or lettering or something like that, then this is really not those types of tools. This is more of the freehand sketching part of it. And I am going to, in a little few minutes, I'm going to digitize something kind of live and I'm going to have you critique me. And I want you to be brutally honest because we've had some discussions and I have said plain out, I am not artistic. I am a good copy artist. I can take stuff from somebody talented like you and bring it up and, you know, trace over it. But, uh, but, you know, I think the doodler is good for both sides of the coin because as an artist like you, obviously you can just do whatever you want. But I think for somebody like me who isn't artistic, it's also a creative avenue because you're not necessarily having to draw something, an illustration from your mind. You're just yeah, kind of I'm, doodling. I'm doing my, all of these designs I've drawn first and then I'm taking them in and trace them in the doodler. I think apart from, I did a little mushroom, which I just, doodled away i find in the doodler as well you can if you want to do something freehand and kind of sketch it first do it with the settings without the stitches being on and just mm -hmm. use that as a layer and then you can doodle over the top of that delete that layer so it's almost like sketching up in your layers so it's same um, you can kind of use it to how it, however you want it but yeah the, and, and that that is something that we tried our best to do was to bring sort of some of that uh, that I guess art art like art app type of mentality into something that generates stitches, and yeah. I like the way you kind of have said that because within the settings in the Doodler you can turn off stitches and just really be looking at lines, and yeah. it, it you allows can, you and do yeah. that and then build up your design from there. If you don't like yeah. what you've done to start with go over the top of it and then delete what you've done. So it's saying um, there's, yeah, you can use it as a drawing program as well. So yeah. it's really easy. But well, again, that... for, for anybody with no experience, if they've got the design there as the backdrop, they can be as creative as they want tracing over it. And the illustrative stuff, it works. It doesn't matter how wobbly your hand is. It's yeah. And stitches out. I, I... I do want to mention that we are just really getting started because we obviously have some, uh, I guess, uh, lessons that both Daryl and Linda have done, which we include free with the software. Uh, I've been busy doing all kinds of videos, just little short videos, and we've posted some stuff, but that's just getting started as well. I, Even though I'm not artistic, I have a lot of ideas that I want to kind of bring out to, you know, from my side of it. But the whole thing that I, I wanted to get across right from the beginning is that I, as a digitizer, assisted in making all these tools work the way I wanted them to technically for embroidery. That was my goal. But the other part that I really wanted to see was after I did my job, I want to see what creative people like yourself and other people do with it. Because that's I, I've heard that over and over that a lot of people just give up on the whole idea of creating designs because they just think, oh, it's, it's, too, it's too hard or it's too much, or I'm not an artist, or I, you know, I can't do that. And I think that this will allow people to, to know they can, they can doodle. Definitely. I think cool. you need no artistic ability to be able to create something in the doodler. So yeah. it's, it's there for everybody, I think. Awesome, awesome. And, and I'm gonna put you on the spot a tiny little bit right now because you know we have a, a few people watching, which is awesome. Thank you guys for being here. But uh, as as I mentioned uh, when we did the release, that Linda, who is incredibly talented, and Daryl, who is incredibly talented, have done the first lessons. And my my goal was to have other really talented people 
do some education, a beginner, intermediate, and advanced lesson as well. So I'm just asking you right now, do you think I can uh, twist your arm and get you to do a series for us? And if you guys are on Facebook and you like that idea, give us some hearts, some you know, thumbs up and everything. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, okay, yeah. Jennifer, <laughs> that, that could have really backfired on me. I said to Jennifer, I'm going to ask her publicly and either I'm going to I'm going to go to bed tonight in a fetal position, crying myself to sleep. <laughs> or everything will have turned out okay. So awesome. Well, yay. Okay. So for everybody who is a new doodler, and for those of you who are thinking of doodling, uh, Judy is on board and we're going to get a series of lessons. And that should be done next week, right, Judy? Just kidding. <laughs> no, no, I won't, I, won't, I won't push my... See, Rome wasn't built in a day and anything I found that's worthwhile usually takes some time and planning and putting together. So... I'm not pressuring you in any way on time. I'd rather have you do it the way you think it should be done best. No, I would, so. I would really enjoy that. So thanks for the invite. Awesome, Hopefully. awesome, awesome. Well, that that is good. And anything else uh, that you'd like to sort of say about the doodler in itself? And what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I know it's late there, but I'm going to bring up a design and I'm going to doodle something kind of live and it won't be pretty, I guarantee you, but we're going to try to actually sew a sample of it afterwards. And if you just want to continue, continue the dialogue so there's no dead air, uh, that would be awesome. And Jennifer will probably also, we might have some questions that have been coming up. I have a few questions. Okay, yes. so Jennifer can ask questions as well. So I will just do one more slide here real quick because I do want to let people know that uh, it's kind of a last call. This is the last live we'll be doing for a little while because Jennifer and I on Saturday are going to see the grandbabies. Yay. Yay. So we are super excited. I can see all of my, my three grandbabies. And just so you know, I will be taking videos of the trip because I'm going to teach Noah how to doodle. That's one of my goals. I want to, I want to teach my, my grandson, my oldest grandson. And you know, uh, Eli is going to want to do it too. Of course. Okay. So, okay. So we'll have two different age groups, but I, I want them to have some fun with it, but there is five days left for our introductory price on the doodler. So you save 25%, hundred dollars off. And if you are interested, uh, I will also let you know, we do have that Facebook group and everything else going on. We have uh, had calls with the developer and when you come out with a new product and even though you've done like, you know, months and months and months of beta testing and testing in house and making sure you're fixing any little hiccups, crashes, all that stuff that happens when you develop. Um, we actually have no real idea what's going to happen until it's released to the general public. And then everybody gets the software. And I, I am pretty impressed because we haven't had nearly as many issues as I thought we would. And that reflects obviously the company who developed it. Pulse Microsystems is you know, a world leader in, in embroidery software and has been for decades. But uh, we have had meetings with them and we are making sure, and they've been on the ball, things are getting kind of fixed and the next stuff's all being put together. So uh, we're not just getting you this program now and saying, good luck. We're going to make sure that it gets better and better over time. So that is awesome so uh we're gonna add one more uh, i guess name here that'll be awesome because judy will have uh, linda rayburn daryl the artist and judy milne will be there as well and i left that little typo there so it's still wit uh linda okay so i did that on purpose no i didn't i forgot till the last minute <laughs> so that's all there and that bonus webinar that i told you guys about last week that'll be a q a webinar for anybody who did purchase the software that'll be december the 10th as well and you'll get an invite for that so i'm gonna doodle something live and we will answer some questions jennifer you go through it and judy you you feel free if jennifer asks some questions maybe you can help us with uh, answering them as well i'll try no pressure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so you're starting up your doodling program over yes there? i am oh and just i will mention one more thing jen before we start because a lot of people have said that as i'm actually creating designs in the first lesson that i did they couldn't see where my uh cursor was and that has been a bit of an issue. And the reason why that is, is because I'm not using a cursor, I'm actually using a pen. And the software that we use to capture our videos actually um, will capture the mouse with the little arrow thing, but it doesn't capture the highlight where the pen is. So I do have a little fix for that, 
Uh, what I am going to do in the future, and let me see if I can do this. I am going to, instead of seeing my face as I'm teaching, I'm going to have the screen up and I'm also going to have my hand on the tablet so you can see where I am as we're doing things live. There's no way that I can actually highlight the screen, but I can get in there and show you with my hand and a pen what's going on. So I just wanted to let you know the education will get better as well. That's your cue, Jennifer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, one comment where I'm just going to jump back to the cutter, the rotary cutter. Uh, Deborah had a comment that the rotary cutter is compatible with any SDX scan and cut machines. So thanks, Deborah. Uh, Jana is asking, do the lessons for the design doodler have a time frame when they're available or are they only available all the time? They are available forever. You can pick it up uh, whenever is convenient for you and the lessons do not expire. The actual uh, artwork will be in your classroom and you can do them whenever you want. And as we add more and more artists, that is right now we have six lessons plus mine. And when uh, Julie adds hers, that'll be nine lessons for you to do. And I love it because everybody has their own style. Okay, um, Judy, if you want to answer some of these, jump in. Can you do applique with the design doodler? Yes, um, I haven't stitched one out yet. I've worked in the Christmas design. I did the background. I used a applique and the I used like a rectangle, the bottom, but added some points and stretched it and used the motif roundabout. So. Uh, you can do lots of different style way uh, applique and doodler. I'm working Perfect. on a really big piece at the moment, so I'm hoping to have that finished by the end of the week. So, ooh, it's got nice. it's got lots of layers in it. So <laughs> I shouldn't have said that because now I've committed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. I do that all the time. <laughs> Uh, John Kay is asking, when you're drawing, could you show your hand digitizing and drawing, not just <laughs> Okay, that is Daisy, just so you know. Okay, Daisy, that wasn't Jennifer. Jennifer doesn't make those noises unless I get her really angry. <laughs> Did you hear the comment? <laughs> no, uh, I. the comment actually was answered uh, in the thing in there. I'm just adding a little bit of shading in there. I don't know if you can see the shading that I added. I am going to be doing it so that you can see my hand with the pen as well as see the screen. So that's that what you're kind of seeing here. I'll make sure it's bigger when I when I save the videos. But this will be the type of thing where instead of seeing my face, I'll actually be showing you my hand working. OK, uh, Karen was asking, can you put the program on more than one computer? And yes, you can. Is it two PCs, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and then obviously the free accompanying iPad app. Yep. Yeah, I've only used uh, iPad. I've been doing everything on my iPad, so it's... Uh, really? Okay. Yeah. See, I, I'm the opposite. I always tell people that the iPad app is like a free, you know, and it is labeled as free. You don't pay for it. It's a free uh, app that you get with the software. And I like to use it when I'm playing. But anytime I want to actually do something, I'm doing it on my uh, Wacom monitor just because it's it's kind of bigger, like I have a larger yeah. monitor. But yeah, so that just means you're more talented than I am. <laughs> I've just got, it's only a 10 inch iPad and I find it, I'm digitizing it one to three rather than one to six as I was taught obviously by yourself and Hatch. But I find the one to three with the sketchy lines, it's all stitching out good so far. So. Good. Okay, Laurent is asking, will there be another option for the December 10th webinar for the people who can't attend that day? And I believe that's a Christmas party you're referring to. And well, actually, no, the December 10th webinar, we are, oh, I might not have told you this, Jen, we're doing another webinar. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> I found it's a lot easier to ask for forgiveness and permission in many cases. So this is one of those cases. Uh, huh. But <laughs> But we are doing a December 10th webinar just for people with the Doodler. So if you purchase the Doodler, we'll have a Q&A session. Unfortunately, we won't be doing it live on two different occasions. 
but we will be uh, filming it and saving it for people to watch after if they're unable to make it. Okay. All right. Uh, Ricky's asking, if you have an older iPad Air 2 that does not accommodate a stylus, can you still use the app and draw with your finger? Absolutely. There's been a few examples of people who have actually used their finger and their files look pretty good and they have their photos up in the Facebook group. Yes, but I will add a little keynote that there is a, uh, I guess, uh, prerequisites for the actual generation and the uh, operating system version, like the version uh, for the iPad app. So if you do have a really, really old iPad, it might be an issue. Okay. Uh, Donna says she noticed there's no knife tool in the doodler. Is there a workaround for that? Uh, not at this point, no. Okay. So it's on the list? Yes. Okay. Is this for Apple only? Uh, it is a PC version uh, program, which means that it will run on a PC. And the uh, right now, the only app that we have is for PC, or sorry, for app, Apple, so for the iPad. Uh, are we looking into getting apps for Androids? Yes. Uh, again, Rome wasn't built in a day, so we're just kind of taking it one step at a time. And it's not necessarily an issue of, uh, you know, good idea and poor planning. It's more an issue of, is this a concept that is actually going to merit investing in, you know, more technology? Uh, that's something that's a bit different with the embroidery industry because a lot of people will look at an app and say, well, you know, an embroidery program costs hundreds of dollars, but I see, you know, drawing apps on stores for like $3.95. How come it's so expensive for embroidery software? And the, the reason is because there's far fewer embroiderers to purchase that product than there is people who would just, you know, draw artwork on an actual app. So it's all, you know, that's kind of the truth behind it. Okay, we have another vote. If you could change the big screen to where you're drawing at opposed to just the image. Sure, I will try my best. Let's make this a little bit bigger. That might be a little bit bigger, maybe. So I'll try that. Okay, I have three tiles on my screen. Are you talking to me? Yes. What do you mean? I see three images on the screen. Yes, Judy. Yep. Okay. So you can't change yours over to the large side? No, I can't. That's okay. stuff that's kind of built into Melon, and they only give us certain, I guess, screens to play with. Okay. Uh, Sharon's asking, are you doing this on a computer? Yes, I'm doing this on a PC, and I'm using a tablet uh, in our preferred, I guess, re links with Amazon. I did find recently a very reasonable pen monitor by a company called Artisol, Artisol or something like that. And for $299, actually it's gone up to 307 last time I looked, but you can get a 22 inch monitor that will allow you to draw on your screen. And they plug into a laptop or into your desktop if you still have one, and you just basically have a big tablet to draw on. Okay. Um, maybe Bethany or James, if you want to add the links for our suggested, I think what Dad was mentioning is there. Uh, Sherry's asking, is there a Mac version coming? Uh, it's been, it's in discussion. And again, if this is successful, then obviously we will be able to uh, do more things. Uh, so it is in discussion. Yes. And again, if you have uh, parallels or et cetera, then it will run. That's yes. a workaround. Yeah. Uh, will this software be used with other cutters in the future? Uh, at this point, I know that there are file formats for quilting, the long arm quilting industry, which is kind of amazing because I know very little about that personally. Uh, but there is actually, and let me just turn this on here so we can see it. So, but there is actually not a cut file at this point. But again, that might be something that we look at in the future. OK, 
can you do cut lace with this? Uh, not really. Lace, to be honest, is kind of like doing corporate logo digitizing. It has to be planned and executed perfectly. And this is, if you're seeing what I'm doing on screen here, and I'll generate these stitches, that is by no means perfect. Okay. Do you want to comment how terrible I am now, uh, Judy? <laughs> <So> <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're all good. <laughs> I, I was actually playing about trying to do a freestanding lace snowflake. So I haven't quite worked it out yet, but if I do, I'll stitch it out and see if it, if it uh, works. Let you know. Yeah. I'm not committing to that one. <laughs> Yeah, the, the amazing thing is, I mean, when I learned how to punch at the age of 17, I was sitting on a wooden box and I was literally holding a pantograph, uh, stitching one stitch at a time. So there's, I, I see an incredible amount of similarities between doodling and what I did when I first started, because, you know, this is really in reality, one stitch at a time. I'm sitting here, you know, basically drawing back and forth and it's artistic, but it's definitely not perfect. So there, there is my hibiscus, and that's kind of what it looks like at a one-to-one -one scale. And it was pretty messy. I mean, if you look at it full screen, uh, it's you know kind of messy looking when you look at it, but we're gonna actually save that onto a thumb drive and Sam, Sammy Sampler is here actually. This is uh, my son's, wonderful girlfriend and our sampler right now and hold on sam let me just save this so i'm gonna bring this one back up i'm gonna try to get this off the screen real quick do you want to ask some more questions jennifer will i get this sure uh can we doodle to both an emb and a quilting format uh yes you can you can uh, do quilting and embroidery you just save the different file formats uh, do you use your mouse for left and right clicks with the doodler? Uh, nope, you do not. No clicking, just doodling. <laughs> How did you find that, Judy, to switch your mind from what you learned in other digitizing programs? Really easy. Uh, I'm used to, my iPad comes everywhere with me. I draw pretty much if I'm not doing something else I'm drawing so the pen and everything is second nature to me so I just treated it like a, a drawing program and it just that's just how it works. Cool. And people are asking does the PC need to be touch screen? Uh, it does not. Uh, here is your Come here, Sam. Sam, come here. Hand in. Okay, there we go. There's your big... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. She, she was all worried that she was going to be on camera, and I promised her she wouldn't, but see, she, her hand We're was almost like... almost related. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like Jennifer. Yeah, I could have said that was Jennifer. Nobody would have known. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, and look, I got to show you guys something else. This is the next cool thing, and let me just go here. We are going to be able to watch this uh, so live. I think actually, here we go. There we go. So we actually have it set up so that we can watch the design. sew out as we do this, and I am so excited to watch this. So I forgot the question, Jennifer, what was the question? Uh, I'm not sure because I'm scrolling through all questions. Sorry. Can I apologize for missing. design from the iPad to PC using a uh, USB C to USB C cable. Yes, you can. As far as from your iPad, I found that the easiest way for me is to either save it to the cloud or to just uh, share it to myself by Skype or email it to myself. I mean, you can save the JDS file format. That's the thing with the iPad is it saves a format called JDS. It will not save the actual stitch file within your iPad because they're very similar in look. I mean, they're almost identical, but the iPad just can't do as much as a PC program. It's just technically not possible at this point. So you take your JDS file to your PC and then you can convert it to your embroidery file. To answer the first question, I remember what it is. Uh, it really does help. You could possibly doodle with a mouse. Like you could pick a mouse up like a brick and try to doodle with it. Uh, artistically, I think that might be a little bit more difficult. Wouldn't you agree, Judy? 
yeah, yeah. I think uh, you yeah. need the pain just to refine your yeah. Like so you know, I, it would feel like drawn with a pencil or drawn with a a big crayon. You know, it's that kind of difference. And I, I've told people that if if I were if I was somebody who wanted to doodle and you didn't want to have a uh, oh the samples running. Well, I'll go to the sample in a second. If you were somebody who wanted to get the doodler and you had to either buy an iPad with a pen, a magic pen, or actually get a larger 22 inch monitor that gives you the drawing capabilities, I would probably go for the $300 option, get the monitor that has the pen, and then you can use that pen for not just the doodler, but any program, digitizing software, drawing software. If you, you know, it, it crosses over into any artistic hobby you have, uh, that would be the way, way that I go. But if you have an iPad, the pen is lots of fun. Can you use the doodler on Chromebook or Kindle? Uh, at this point, there is not a uh, app for, I'm sorry, there we go. There is not an app for Android at this point. It is just for iPad. And if you have an iPhone, you can't doodle on your iPhone. It's for iPad specifically. How do you move the widget ball around on the screen? And also, can you make the properties and sequence pages smaller? Uh, properties and sequence pages, no, you can't. You can't actually make them smaller in either the PC or the uh, iPad version. And I'm just trying to get over here so that we can get this screen up as well. Uh, I can actually move my widget around by just grabbing it and placing it wherever I want. And I know some people have said that the widget is a little big, especially on an iPad. Have you found that, Judy? Uh, so it's okay. I just move it around. Move or, it. Or get yeah. rid of I need the, the room. It kind of, it, you get to it. Like, you get used to it almost. Yeah. So that, that's the one thing that I suggest is move the widget around so it's out of the way from your artwork. And with regards to your properties, if you want to you know, clear up real estate, you can just close your properties and open them just by hitting that button there. So whatever you wanna have, you know, and this, it works the same way in the iPad app. So I do usually have all of my stuff closed to give myself as much real estate, unless I'm uh, doodling on my you know, 32 inch Wacom monitor, because I have lots of real estate to play with then, well. yeah. Okay, Jennifer. Yep. Uh, Donna's asking, what's the email if anybody wants to get technical issues with Design Doodler? That would be contact at embroiderylegacy.com. Yep. Donna? Contact at embroiderylegacy.com. Uh, we have our Facebook group for the Doodler now. Ask your questions there. We are doing our very, very best to get things answered. And uh, I'll just be you know, upfront in that some issues that we are having we are going straight to the developer and saying, you know, this has arised and they have been very quick to uh, assist us with, you know, problem solving things. So that's part of the, part of the game. Yeah, auto save, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, actually that was a discussion today. We actually had a meeting today and auto save will be something that will be added. So for those of you who have been playing with it and you're saying, I wish it would auto save because especially on the iPad, uh, that is something that is coming. Yes, yeah. lots of people requested it and yep. they're fulfilling people, it. People request it and we like to do, I, I learned after all these years of being married, I like to do what I'm told because life is better that way. I mean, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I hinted for the, the backdrop as well because I know it doesn't save. Uh, so if you close your design and open it, you don't have your backdrop again. So I just keep a note of my sizes and my backdrop. So when yes. I have, and it only takes seconds, but it would be nice if it's saved, but it's not a huge hardship. Yeah, originally, uh, I know people aren't seeing me, but I'll keep talking anyways. I'm the little flower stitching back and forth there. <laughs> but uh, originally, um, we did want the artwork to save as a backdrop within the iPad version but it just wasn't possible because it's an app and it didn't have the uh, capability. Uh, that Keeping that in mind, it's something that we haven't closed a door to. We just have to keep working at it. So it might be in the future something that we can add to an iPad app, but it's, uh, it's, it's at this point one of those bigger assets. It seems like it should be simple, 
But if you are a programmer out there, I'm sure you'll agree. Okay, Jennifer, next question. Uh, Kelly's asking, when you save the image, is the option, can you download it into a DST file? Yes. You can save uh, all the different flavors for pretty much every machine that is in existence, embroidery machine. Donna says, it's amazing how quick doodling is compared to digitizing. The learning curve is amazingly small compared to digitizing. Well, thank you for that feedback. Cool. Uh, all updates to the software are absolutely free. Those include the improvements to the software's functionality, fixing any reported issues, et cetera. Um, although a while away, given how new the software is, upgrades will only be optional and likely be charged only if the new added features will justify it. That's because upgrades will include new tools, features, which of course takes considerable amount of time, resources for the software engineers to put into place. But rest assured that if there's ever a paid upgrade, it will be worth it. And that so was our that makes sense. Yes, that was our public announcement from Mama Deer. So I've we, a, there's <laughs> been a few people have asked the ask, same question. So yeah, yeah we, we want to make sure that the software functions really well. So anything, any fixes, anything we can do to make the software better, uh, those will be free within the updates. If there is uh, you know something that we add that is just phenomenal and a bunch of new features and tools, those will cost money to uh, generate and implement. So there probably will be a fee. Tammy says she thinks the doodler seems to be great and easy compared to something she has. Awesome. Uh, can you doodle files that would be used as edge to edge quilting with multi needle machine? I would imagine so. Uh, have you, are you, have you done any quilting Judy? Like, is that something you No. No. Um, it fascinates me, but no, it's, um, too much measuring yeah well and i i agree i i know just enough to be dangerous so if we do have anybody in our groups who you guys are hardcore quilters please contact us because we would love to work with you i mean i know my personal limitations and that is definitely one of them with regards to quilting so we do want to learn yes we want to fulfill the need yes uh are there written instructions or manual that are online when you purchase the program? I think so. No, there is. <laughs> Actually, there, there is a manual, a PDF manual. I think it's like 60 something pages long. It, it tells you what all the features are. And then we have the video that I did that's about an hour and five minutes and 32 seconds uh, about, uh, but that will show you all of the features as well. Eileen says, I have a touchscreen laptop with a bamboo pen. Could I use that? Uh, I would think so, yes. Uh, it would be, I mean, I can I can doodle with my finger. Have you tried, Judy, uh, doodling with your finger on the iPad? Yeah, I mean, again, because I have the pen, I'm going to use the pen, but it, it yeah. yeah, you just don't get the same details. Unless yeah. It, really dexterous with their finger, maybe the can, but. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm one of these people that has uh, 28 pairs of glasses because I lose them all the time. And that tends to happen with my magic pen too. So the other day I was forced to doodle with my finger and it did actually work pretty well, but I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Sandra says she, oh, she has a Wacom bamboo. Could she use that? Uh, yes, you could. Uh, Wacom Bamboo is uh, like a tablet, uh, like it's almost like a mouse pad, and you use the pen, but you're actually drawing on the pad. So it is a little bit of uh, hand-eye coordination, and depending on how much you're zooming, the area that you have on your pad reflects the size or the area of your screen most times. So it, it can be done, but it is a little bit more difficult. Suzanne says, if you only have a normal PC and no pen, how could you use the doodler or could you? Uh, you'd need to, uh, you, in my opinion, you would need to get some type of pen device, uh, whether it's an iPad or whether it is a monitor. Okay. Uh, Tammy says, when I save a file, can I take it to my digitizer? Uh, yep, you could. Actually, I, I find that because the doodler isn't a program that really competes with any other software programs that are in the market. 
uh, it is very complementary because we, we are a hatch reseller. So I'll use hatch as an example because it is an incredible digitizing program that has you know, so many features. Uh, you can doodle your designs in the doodler and then bring them into, you'd want to edit them in the doodler because you're dealing with the native file format. But once you're done, bringing them into Hatch and making other adjustments and adding lettering is definitely something you do. I don't know if Judy wants to answer this one or she wants to pass it back to you. <laughs> uh, somebody's asking Doodler versus Hatch digitizer and what is instances would you use one over the other? Yeah, that's all yours, Judy. <laughs> well, um, I've only been digitizing 18 months. I've kind of only been in, uh, discovered embroidery at the beginning of lockdown, so it's it's all pretty new to me. But wow. Hatch, um, I've been 18 months in, and I've been creating lots of stuff. The Doodler, I would say, has completed my toolbox, if you like. So I would say I equally would use both. The Doodler I'll probably use more for creating the artistic stuff, but yeah, Hatch I'll I still need. You know, I think um, I would say if you can have them both is my answer to that. It's a good combination. Yeah, that Absolutely. is a good, that, and that's they a great answer. Each other. Yeah, they, they complement each other. And that is one thing that I definitely set out right from the beginning is this is not a program that competes with Hatch or any other software brand out there. Yeah. No, it's say uh, this is what I was looking for when I started looking into digitizing. I had no idea how complicated the process was. And I was looking for this that didn't exist. Little did I know it existed inside your head at that point. But <laughs> well, it actually was in beta testing at that point, but you, you wouldn't have wanted to play with it six months in. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have had a clue what I was doing. So so yeah, I would say had I had this to start with, I might not have done digitizing. So I'm glad it happened the other way around because say I found Hatch and digitizing really interesting and good to learn as well. So, so yeah, get both. Awesome. <laughs> and, and just so you guys know, the sample is officially finished. I think Sammy Sampler is going to take it off the machine and bring it in here. But even from this angle, it does look like a flower. So I'm, I'm kind of impressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next question. question. <laughs> oh, there's our dog again. Can I Sorry, guys. An SVG file into Doodler and create an applique file from it? Uh, at this point, no, you cannot bring an SVG file into Doodler as far as an art file is concerned. Okay. Would you when, mind just asking Sam to bring that sample in? Samantha, whenever you're ready. Uh, Catherine says, when things are added, like the auto save, et cetera, how will that be added onto the, the program? Uh, we are just working out all those specifics, actually, as we speak. That was one of our topics that we had today with the developers, because uh, there is obviously a PC version that will be updated and an, uh, an app for your iPad that will be updated as well. So all of that will be coming soon, and we'll let you know exactly the way it works. Oh, sorry, I can't get it there. I can't get it there. Can you bring it in a little closer? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Now, the, the one thing I want to point out is that I think it took me far less time to doodle it than it did to run it on the machine. So that's number one. So man beat machine. I do want to say that. Uh, but if you look at the design, I mean, it, it does look like a hibiscus with a little bit of blending around the outside. There's no hard stitches on it, so you're not creating bulletproof embroidery. And I will also point out, if you go to your garden tomorrow and you see black outlines around your flowers, go buy some products to heal that right away. So this is not, uh, I guess, nature-wise perfect. So it's a little more car cartoony, but I thought it would add a, a little more of a dramatic uh, effect to it. So there, we doodled live. That's our first, that's our first doodle live session. Thank you, Sam. Hey, Jennifer, anything? Yep, we have lots more questions. Uh, Stacy says, thanks for the monitor option. She bought a computer today and she has a touch screen, but this is much more cost effective. Awesome. So, options, options. Uh, Kate is asking, does the doodler work out direction of the stitches or is this done when filling the design? Uh, do you want to answer that? Or you, you give your answer and then I'll give mine. <laughs> so 
uh, when I was playing around with the pressure sensitive um, piece and mm -hmm. the fills, yeah, you can go down and you can change the direction of the stitches yourself. So, or it it gives you like a default, and then if you can change it around from there. Yeah, and and with the properties, when you go into the properties, uh, and if you draw a line, no matter which brush it is that you're using, it will usually generate those stitches at a horizontal angle. But then you also have within the properties that little scroll bar where it will actually start to slant the stitches at an angle as well, which I haven't taught this lesson yet. But uh, one thing I love about that whole concept is if you're doing uh, embroidery with really, really thin satin stitches, like we're talking, you know, one millimeter or even a half a millimeter, those usually aren't friendly on your machine. They sink into the fabric. But because you can take those objects and globally change the angle. So instead of going this direction, the direction of my pen between it, I'm changing the angle to this direction. The stitch length becomes longer and it creates more throw of thread on the, the width of the stitch. So you still have the same width, but it's more friendly because you're creating more distance. So there, there is stuff like that that we built in for a reason. How about the underlay for fills? Uh, there is uh, all kinds of buttons uh, where you can add a perpendicular fill, you can add an edge run fill, you can add zigzag fills, you can uh, adjust inset values, the spacing between your perpendicular. I mean, it's it's kind of, and I, I hope you uh, enjoyed this part, Judy, but I, I wanted to make it so that it was so simple for people to just take that little scroll bar and live time see how their underlay changes underneath the design. Yeah, uh, That's, you know, from a learning perspective, somebody who's new, to be honest, they don't know the difference between underlay and underwear. I mean, it's, you know, it's just, it's under something. Uh, but when you get into embroidery, you start to learn that underlay serves a purpose. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a much easier transition as people start to doodle and they say, oh, there's this underlay button. I wonder what that does. And then, of course, we're going to have a million videos to explain it. It'll be easier for them to see it generate live. Okay. Kelly says, if I don't know how to digitize myself already, how self-explanatory is it to use the doodler? Do you want to try that, Judy? I would say it's something you can just sit and play with and you'll get results with every tool so i think linda did her like sampler as well so even just going in and doing the sampler is going to give you an idea how, what the different tools do but it's mm -hmm. so easy to get results without knowing how to digitize yeah and that was my other goal within the development side of this is i wanted the tools behind the scenes to behave in such a way that somebody with no uh, real, I guess, background will still be able to use it and it will actually stitch out okay on the machine. You know, that's really the test. Just so so, uh, so people know, we did actually have two of our grandkids, the, the oldest two, doodle something on the tablet and we stitched it out and you could definitely tell their artwork, what it was, yes. etc. So. Well, I, th I thought it was a, I thought it was a penguin playing hockey, but apparently it was a dinosaur killing another dinosaur. So it, there was, the, you know, artistic the, perspective. yeah, it was a, a little bit of a artistic uh, perspective going on there, but it was, it was fun. And like I said, in a week and a half, when I'm with my grandkids, that's going to be one of my number one things to do. Doug is asking, could you clarify about long arm digital format capabilities? Does it have that? Uh, it does, and I will clarify it as soon as I find out more information about it myself. So the developers have put the long arm formats within the software. Uh, I don't know enough about that equipment to speak wisely on it, but I know the developers do work in that industry, which is why they added those in. So it's an exciting added feature that we're going to be learning as we go along. Maybe Doug's a contact. Yeah, say hi, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call, please. <laughs> Is there a way to set the sensitivity for the pressure pen tools in the software? At this point, no. I wish I wish there was, and that might be a further request, but uh, it it is not as sensitive as I would personally want it to be, but I know that there's obviously a lot of stuff in the background. Uh, would you agree, Judy? Yeah, it does seem to stitch better than it looks on, on the rendering on screen 
doesn't give you an awful lot of difference, but I notice when it stitches, it seems to stitch with a bit more of a taper than it looks on screen. So Good. But I haven't played with that too much yet. But Okay, LaRonda is happy to give us her feedback and work with us in regards to the quilting. quilting. And she says she has played with the quilting and it does work well. So wow. Okay. You. Yeah. Uh, can you capture that comment real quick, Jennifer? <laughs> so. How do you access the free training? Uh, right now we are still working again with the developers on getting our demo version available. We, uh, we wanted to come to market with this when we did for a reason, because it took us like two years to get to that point. But we are going to have a demo version of, available in the future. We're just not locked down to the date yet. So Linda was asking, how do you access the free training? When oh, the, you purchase the yes. Doodler itself, yep. uh, you would log into our, the classroom on digitizingmaybe.com on our website. Yes. And within our classroom is all of the files and the videos, et cetera, that you need to follow along and to learn and play. And of course, we have our own Facebook group for the Design Doodler. So people are helping each other. And it's encouraging to see the artwork from somebody like like judy yes yeah yes. just please keep posting the your designs giving people there's great stuff on there the group's really good yeah awesome and uh Loranda says the branching function is very helpful doing continuous line quilting designs cool uh, we still have questions. How are you doing for time? Uh, we have a few more minutes. Uh, Judy has not fallen asleep yet, so I think. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> are you okay to hang? Are you okay to hang tight for a couple more minutes, Judy? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Awesome. Nancy says I've done some edge to edge quilting on table runners, and they I've been very satisfied with the results. So awesome. Oh, more for quilting. Thanks, Nancy. And can I interrupt for one second, Jen? Uh, one thing that I haven't really showed people yet, and I saw you kind of played with it, within the applique tool, you can choose to close or open the end, right? So you don't have to have a closed applique, but you also have the ability to turn off the placement and the tack down stitches. And then you can take that satin stitch and you can change it to a blanket stitch, a running stitch, and there's a whole bunch of motifs there as well. So if you want to do quilting, uh, like, I guess, in the hoop, blocks of quilts with different pattern motifs, all of that is in the software that you could do that as well. We just haven't had a chance to show you yet because there's just so much to show. Stacy says, what file extensions work to bring in an image to potentially trace? Uh, the, I think best would be a JPEG or uh, PNG. I think there's four different options, but those are the, the PNG and the JPEG are the ones that I have traditionally always brought into my digitizing programs. Yeah, there's around four, the PNG, the JPEG, the GIF, and the, the bitmap files. Yes. Yeah. What do you bring in, Judy? Pretty much the same thing? Yeah, usually JPEGs. I'm starting to learn to try and size them before I take them in again for the issue of the artwork, not saving that or once I've sized it, I just take a note of the position and the size. So when mm. I reopen, it's easy to do. Yeah, but it yeah. lines up perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. And just just so just so you know, there is two videos that I've done so far. One is on how to load a piece of artwork if it doesn't load into your program. And that's not just the doodler, but that's also digitizing software as well. I have had some PNGs that just won't load. And I have to actually open those in uh, paint or something and then resize them a bit, save them back out, and then magically they do load. So that is a video that I, I did. I don't know if it's up yet. Another video that I just did was exactly what you were saying, Judy, where I show people how on your JDS files, you can uh, easily bring back in your artwork if you do exactly what you said. Say, remember the size and remember to do the zero, zero on the top and the left and then it just lines right back up where you were before yeah i mean yeah. it's it doesn't take long you just get used to having to do it it's fine yeah but it will be much better if we could automate it i do agree yeah but i think um i think it's it's pretty mind-blowing as it is <laughs> so <laughs> so it's not it's not a deal breaker <laughs> no, definitely not awesome. Kathleen, the 
Design Doodler can be installed on two PCs and then the free accompanying app on your iPads. Yes. Is internet access necessary for the Doodler to work? Uh, no, it is not. It is not a uh, program that needs uh, internet access. That's why it is a serial number based program. And that's why you are limited to the amount of activations that you can have. So it's not like Hatch, which is an online serial, uh, I guess, security based system. Okay. Both are good, just different. Yep. Does Hatch have long arm digitizing capabilities? Uh, I'm not sure. I would have to look into it. Being that I'm not a quilter, uh, I haven't really looked into that too much. Pakola, you could post that on our Hatchbacks Facebook yes. group, and I'm sure lots of people who are using that would be able to for sure answer your question. Uh, is there an option that would suggest a stabilizer to use based on how heavy the design is? Uh, no, we don't really have any sort of uh, fabric assist functions in the program as it stands, so that is not available at this point. Uh, I was kind of uh, cool because I know I saw in the Facebook group somebody did something in the Doodler and they brought it into another program that I know does uh, kind of a density chart. It kind of makes things uh, red in areas where things are stitch intensive and kind of blue or soft colors where it is soft. Uh, I forget what the software is called. But anyway, she showed us a picture and she kind of complimented that uh, she was amazed that the stitch file on the doodler was actually not stitch intensive and not bulletproof. So that's kind of a cool thing. Okay. People are liking the tip sheets that we have in the Facebook group. So I'm going to say keep those coming. Thank you, Linda. Yes. <laughs> Hot tips, Linda. <laughs> uh, is the black outline always there or can the color be changed or the outline be thinner? I think she meant of your flower that you just uh, you can You can change the color of the outline to any color palette you want. Those are the def default colors and there's a bunch of different thread charts there. Uh, I could go in and edit and modify all those points or just do one running stitch around. Uh, or not have any black. Or not have any black if you don't want. If you do not want your flower to be diseased, you can just uh, choose another color. Yeah. I haven't been doing much digitizing lately, but I want to learn about an option for quick projects. Looks good. Yeah, Thank you, this, is, this is quick, and, and that's my whole thing. I, I'm one of these strange people that I've been saying for years, digitizing is fun. And for me, it is. I love the process and I love to do it. Uh, this is something that we're not going to call it digitizing. It's doodling. You know, it's doodling with and doodling is fun because it's, it's, you know, there's no pressure. Which is the next comment. Yep. June says she's happy with all the videos on the doodler. She's waiting for the arrival of her pen tablet and she's excited and she's ready for her fun. Yay. Awesome. Cool. Uh, when is the last day of the sale? Uh, five days from now. November 7th. Okay. So November 7th. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. A couple more questions. Kind of winding it up. I awesome. guess I would say, Judy, what would you say? You've been helping a lot in our Facebook group. So thank you for that. Do you <laughs> think there's anything that you feel you repeatedly have answered that you'd like to sort of put out there for people who are listening right now? I think maybe um i think it's mostly been people asking about the ipad side of things so i think i've jumped on to answer the ipad a lot so um offhand i don't know it's been a real variety of uh, things i've kind of tried to answer anything i feel like i know the answer to so so yeah <laughs> thank you we we appreciate it yes thank you <laughs> i like being awesome. nosy <laughs> we all do. That's how we all learn from each yeah. other, right? Yeah. Cool. And on that note, just so you guys know, there is a Design Doodler Facebook group. So we did create a group specifically to learn and to ask questions about the Design Doodler. You do not have to own the Design Doodler to request to be in the group. If you want to find out a little more information, ask people. I mean, that's always been the big thing for me is I can... I can tell you the best, uh, you know, information about this product and make it sound good. But the real, uh, I guess, truth behind how good it is, is the people who use it. You know, if, if you are happy with it, if Judy's happy with it, then that means far more than anything I can say. Any other questions, Mrs. Deer? 
Mama dear? Uh, not at this time. Okay, awesome. So we do have to give away a prize because uh, we always do. And we are going to give away a couple more spots to our Christmas party. If you have already registered to be a part of it, uh, you will get another ticket that you can generously give one of your embroidery friends. So, did you want to say goodbye to Judy so she knows oh, that? Yeah, Judy, <laughs> uh, you know what? We, uh, well, you're probably really tired right now. So, I, I thank you for joining us and I appreciate all you've done. And I'm really looking forward to getting those lessons next week. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Okay. No seat for you tonight. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we can talk about that on another occasion and, and go over some ideas and stuff like that. But I really appreciate your participation and you're going to be, uh, I guess, giving some lessons. And I know everybody's looking forward to that because you are just super, super talented. So thank you very much. They're stunned. This, that's all. <laughs> uh, I don't think there'll be any issue. I could listen. I could listen to your accent for hours. So <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> I just have to get over here. Come on. There we go. Yay. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. So Christmas party giveaway. So if you would like to attend our Christmas party, uh, we did open up a second time slot because we sold out of the first and I think we're down to, I don't know, like maybe a hundred seats left for the second one. So uh, there is still some space available. Uh, not much, but there is two tickets. So one on Facebook, one on YouTube. And you're not just getting the Christmas party, but you are getting the bonus design. So there's really uh, five cute festive designs that we're going to give people so they can enter a contest and do something cute with it. We have the, uh, I guess, bonus designs, which are some really cool freestanding angels and, a, uh, and one with mylar that I did. So you do it as a freestanding lace angel or mylar and a cool Christmas ornament. And there is two bonus in the hoop projects that you will get just for attending as well. So you get all that good stuff plus entrance to the party. Do we have some winners, Jennifer, dear? Do you want to ask them to type the word party in? Okay, maybe? well, type the word party in then or something. Or I'm sure people, have, everybody knows we do this. So I'm sure that as soon as I said who wants to win, we probably had people type in uh, win, uh, type in thanks, Judy, type in design doodler, type in anything you want right now. Uh, but we, we do want to thank you guys because it's been a crazy, crazy week this last week with the launch of the Doodler. And we are just blown away with uh, how much you guys are, are loving it. Uh, some of you have had some little issues and we're doing our very best to get those resolved. Anything we can do and the developer. So we stand behind what we are doing. That's, that's what we try to do. So anyways, uh, is that enough time? Did I fill some time so we can have some... Still waiting for another name to come in. Okay, we're waiting. One we more go. name to okay. come in, guys. Uh, also, right. are we ready? Okay, here we go. All right, so on YouTube, the winner is Jesse Gibson. Congratulations, Jesse. And our Facebook winner is Jennifer Bradshaw. So, congratulations, Jennifer. And if you both want to email into contact at embroiderylegacy.com, and Leanne will set you up with the ticket to the Christmas party. Awesome. And I will show you my last slide here real quick, just so I can get this one and you'll see my face disappear for a second. But just so you can see, this is the design doodler on the iPad app. And that's one thing that I do love about it is all of the buttons and the layout is identical to the PC based program. And that's, that's something we tried to do as well was there it was for there to be a real connection between both the program that you see on your PC and the app that you're using on the comfort of your couch. So awesome. Anything else? Are you going to, you going to say the goodbyes? I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you for joining us guys. We really appreciate you. I hope you uh, are enjoying the doodler and uh, maybe you should say the name of the doodler group. Facebook group of nobody's. Uh, can you say that? Because I forget it. I know. I know. There's a specific name. Machine. It's the Embroidery okay. Design Doodler Software Official Group. Okay. So the Embroidery Design Doodler Software Official Group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Say. So, yeah. That's what. It's a mouthful. It's a good thing we didn't ask you to type that out to win the prize. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you guys. Don't ask John to spell it. <laughs> oh, 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 that was a cheap blow. Okay, 
Well, you can tell it's going to be a really long night for me. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And we are not going to be live for a couple of weeks because we're visiting the grandbabies, but we'll do a live as soon as we get back. So thank you guys. Thanks, Appreciate everyone. It.